So you're wondering about social media marketing and what's changed here in 2023. Well, you might be surprised or not on some things that remain the same and what we got to do for the future. So stick around. What's up, everybody? This is Tim Whittemore with the Whittemore Group with LPT Realty. Coming at you with some more great information on what it's like to be an agent. Uh, if you're trying to better yourself or be a better leader, you are in the right place. I've been through a lot of this stuff. I've been that team lead. I've been an ops manager, been part of a team as a buyer's agent, been a single agent, and done so in three different states. So Please learn vicariously through me so you don't make the, main, the those same mistakes. So, as I just made a mistake. <laughs> so they say that you are the sum of the five voices that you do surround yourself with. Let me be one of those voices to help you get to the next stage of your career. All right, so let's get into it. The social media marketing, who our favorite, which is probably where you found this video. Uh, for real estate agents here in 2023. So let's start out. What's the same, right? Well, um, there's some pivotal things that you need to know when marketing, period, right? A lot of agents, including myself, when I first got into this, and they're like, who are you going to market to? I thought, well, everybody. Anybody that wants to buy, sell, or invest in real estate, send them my way, right? Well, not necessarily, because when you market to everybody, you pretty much market to nobody. It's like one of those things when everything's a priority, nothing is a priority, right? So I actually had a mentor uh, a little bit early in my career and said, well, why don't you figure out who your client avatar is? Who the heck is that, right? Client avatar. Figure who you want to work with. Who's going to work with you the best? So to give you an example, you want, um, for me, I moved to an area with a ton of military bases and I was prior Air Force, right? So um, they said, yeah, I, I want a couple that's in the military between, you know, 29 and 35. And I wanted them to have one, one and a half kids, you know, that make, that are a specific rank and you know are from this specific area i got real specific on exactly who i was targeting just to give you an example that's not the exact example but you know to give you an idea so that was who i was and that way who i communicated to when i communicated in my social media that was the person i was communicating to that would respond the best now does that say that you're going to communicate to that avatar and other people might communicate a different way Absolutely not. It still brought in business for people that, you know, still liked our style and the way that we communicated. So having that is still the same. So keep doing that and make sure that your message markets to them. So social media, where are we posting now, right? Well, tried and true, Facebook is still a monster. That's right. Through Meta, Facebook is still a monster. Whether you're having a personal page or a business page all those different things, you still need to be doing that. Now, Facebook business pages aren't what they used to be, right? It used to be have a business page, that's all I've got, and keep my personal stuff personal, and I'll still get business. That's not the case anymore. <laughs> you need to build out your um, personal page as a marketing machine, right? Your business page is just there for, for validity that you do real estate. So you still have to post on there and it's also good to run ads. However, our Facebook ads over the previous year in 2022 just didn't have the same effect. So be a leery of that, but however, continue to innovate and try those um, things and, and put out ads to see if you can still get people. I'm just telling you from our experience here on our team. So if you're on Facebook, you should be on Instagram too. It's a different audience that pays attention to different things. However, Instagram then links to Facebook, right? So if you post on Instagram, you can make a set or change a setting that it actually goes onto Facebook, saves you half that time. Other places that people are getting business, TikTok. TikTok, why? Tons of short form videos. And for us with very, you know, short attention spans <laughs> that just want to be entertained, right? And want to get information. 
YouTube. Probably saw this on YouTube as well, right? So YouTube is a huge place um, where you can get a ton of business as well. Um, Snapchat is still a thing. Snapchat stories and going out. And there's so much more. It depends on where your client avatar is sitting, right? So a younger generation may be on a different type of social media platform than the older generations. And it just really depends on specifically who you're going after and where they're at. If you don't know where they're at, ask them. <laughs> Find those people. I'm sure you know them if it's your avatar and ask them where their social media and where they spend a lot of their time. Eventually you'll figure out where you need to be. So now that we talked about where to post, we got to talk about how much. What's the minimum effective effort, Tim, that I need to put in for this to be effective? So I've been asked that question and the answer that I'm going to give you I'll give you an actual number for it. But the answer I'm going to give you is going to depend on the result that you want to get out. What I mean by that is if you're using social media and you're using this to be a large percentage of your business, the minimums I'm going to tell you will not get you there. Why? Because almost everybody in this business is on social media. Most employers look at prospective employees on social media and on Facebook prior to even getting him in for an interview. As a, a potential employer for myself, I did the same thing for my people. That is just where it is. So they're looking for social proof. They want to know that you're a person. If you don't have a Facebook, you seem kind of sketch. And with the thousands of realtors that are out there, probably in your marketplace, you'll probably find somebody else and they may choose them over that if they're picking between realtors. What that means is that being on social media isn't an option. It's a barrier to entry. You need to be on there and you need to be active on at least one of these popular platforms so that people can research you and see what you're doing. So this is a supplement to actually doing your lead generation besides doing actual lead generation. So in order for it to maybe produce one or two, <laughs> one or two people per year, and back up your other lead generation source, whether you're paying for them or not, this is what you need to do. At a very minimum, you should be posting 21 times per week. 21, okay? Realistically, somewhere between 21 to 27 at a very minimum, okay? This is just to be in the game, like I mentioned before. This is just to be in the game. So when you're doing this, this seems like a lot but it really isn't. Why? Because what else can you do? You can take one piece of content. This is the lazy version, but you can take one piece of content and put it on one platform that syndicates to the other platform and repurpose it and put it onto another. An example that we use or that I personally do use, and please feel free to check out my um, Facebook website, personal website, is that we put it on Instagram and the same thing filters into Facebook. So that's two. And then we move it into LinkedIn, which is our third one that we use. So the, in essence, that one piece of content we created went three times in one day. Three times seven, 21. Now we do a heck of a lot more than that. But um, at a very minimum, you could do that. That only takes you a couple of moments, maybe 15 minutes each day to generate that. My suggestion is that you create all of this stuff in advance and plan it out at least a week ahead of time so that you don't get overwhelmed. Us as real estate agents, we get busy and just randomly sometimes, right? Hopefully not randomly, but it seems that way, right? So you get those people that come in, you gotta go show homes or something else comes up and you're like, man, just helmet fire and go everywhere and you forget about it, right? And then you forget about it once and be like, oh, I did one day, it was fine, two days, and then you just stop doing it all together. And then it's just once a week which really isn't helping you at all. So make sure that you do plan it out. So things that you should be posting um, should be some sort of day in the life sort of post that you can do on, on Facebook. Hey, look at me, I'm shooting videos right now. You know, whatever, I'm showing a home. All those different pictures, because pictures are really gonna be good for Instagram. Uh, engagement questions work really good in Facebook and just asking the world things that are on your mind and just getting people to talk. Putting in real estate news um, could be just, you're just listed, just sold, but I would keep those to a minimum necessarily on your personal page, but they'll be great on your business page. Uh, there are just tons and tons of different things and it's really just gonna be dependent upon you. 
What I suggest on your personal page too is I use the five to one theory where five of these things are more personal to me and one of which will be more generated towards business and real estate. Uh, Gary Vanderchuk uh, actually wrote a book called Jab, Jab, Right Hook, uh, where he gives, 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 and then asks for business. This is very similar to what you're going to do. When people perceive you as being too salesy, they kind of stop following you altogether. But that's going to be a risk you're going to have to take. Uh, without getting into that too much, we'll go on to what's new. The whole reason you're here, still 10 minutes into this video, all right? So what's new? The biggest thing right now in 2023 is video. 100% is video. Why? Because video, we're humans, right? We, we love things that move around and, and, and have interaction, right? We communicate better in video. Why? Because you can see me, you can hear me, right? That's probably 80% other than the spoken words. Actually, it's closer to 93%. Anyway, <laughs> of, of how we communicate, right? So we like videos and consumers love videos. So you as producing for your business, need to be doing video, right? Don't care what you look like. People know are eventually going to see what you actually look like. So don't worry about that too much. All right. But just get out there and do video. Um, th if you are putting a video together, what's the sequence that I need to do? You need to do a hook. Tell them what's going to happen. Give them the content and then do a CTA. That's a call to action. Tell them what to do. Get a hold of me, right? So make sure to put those into your videos at a very bare minimum in order to get what you need to get done, whether depending upon the format that you're doing. The reason why this is so important outside what I told is because of that communication and stories. Tell stories. Tell stories about your business. Tell stories about yourself. People love stories and love to retain information from stories. That's why the movie business is so popular, right? They love stories. One other huge thing that is a big part of bringing people on to, to trust you, to want to use you as a business partner, is showing humility. Showing that not necessarily that you know everything and you're the most badass realtor that you, anybody has ever seen, right? It's, it's showing humility that, you know, you can make mistakes and showing that, you know, I may not be the best, but I'm trying the best to get there, right? Um, Humility means so much uh, when it comes and is actual true because it actually gives them an opportunity to perceive empathy. And empathy is a huge thing that, that, that is big in sales right now. So if you can interject that into your sales calls, if you can interject that into your uh, videos, which is what we're talking about, into your emails, it's going to make a huge difference in the long-term nurture of any of the leads that you're trying to get. Well, there you go. That's all I have it for the social media marketing for real estate agents in 2023. If you have any questions about anything I mentioned, go ahead and leave them here in the comments below. If you've been having some success outside of this recently, please leave them in the comments below. We love hearing from you. Please keep it positive. <laughs> all right. And of course, if you are looking to get into real estate, especially here in the panhandle of Florida, looking to change brokerages or join the team, Feel free to reach out to me. Uh, give me a call, text, email, find me on social media. I'm always happy to help any way I can. If you take the time to reach out to me or comment on this post, I will personally respond to it. But again, my name is Tim Whittemore with the Whittemore Group here with LPT Realty. See you in our next video. Take care.